From the pit to the palace, from certain death to abundant life, Joseph, the patriarch who pictures Messiah. Zola Levitt presents Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss. And we want to welcome you to Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer. Miles, I love the story of Joseph because I know that all of us have gone through maybe uh, a setback or two mm -hmm. or people have done things to hurt us yes. and we've found ourselves in a place of delay. Yes. You know, the scripture talks in Proverbs, um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. Well, Joseph, could he could have had a heart sick moment for two years left still in the prison, yeah. but God had a divine transfer that he was getting ready to bring Joseph for. We really see that in the failure of the wise men, so-called the occult magic of Pharaoh failed him. And we also see that God is working in Pharaoh's life. It says in the Hebrew, Palgaim Maim Lev Melech Beyad Adonai, the heart of the king, like streams of water, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. So let's go to our story now as we see Joseph being brought to Pharaoh for the first time. For Joseph, this day started like every other day. He would oversee his fellow prisoners with diligence and grace, but he would soon have an unforeseen encounter that would change his life forever. On this day, he would meet face to face with the ruler of all Egypt, the mighty Pharaoh, who is deeply perturbed and in search of answers. Pharaoh has had two unusual dreams that trouble him. He gathers his wisest sages, but none can provide an interpretation. Seeing his master's dilemma, the cupbearer recalls the Hebrew who had accurately interpreted his own dream and that of the unfortunate baker. He informs Pharaoh of his time in prison and of the one who predicted that he would be restored to his office as cupbearer. Pharaoh's personal sages had proven to be incompetent. Perhaps this Hebrew from Canaan could share his godly wisdom. Hoping to find relief regardless of the source, Pharaoh calls for Joseph to be brought before him. We're here on the Mount of Olives, standing in front of an olive tree. As you know, Gethsemane is in this area, and it's somewhere near here where Yeshua agonized before going to the cross. We love the olive tree, the picture that it is of Jew and Gentile together worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, the story of Joseph really is the beginning of that, as we're going to see the counsel that comes through a Hebrew to the Gentile world and the knitting together that begins and is challenged throughout the, throughout the centuries. But we know the story of Joseph is so much about suffering and the triumph to come. Yes, you know, there's a jogging of the memory of the cupbearer due to Pharaoh's dream. He had a very disturbing dream and there was no one that was able to interpret it. And it was the cupbearer that said, oh, there's this Hebrew that I know that interpreted my dream and it came to pass. Why don't we get him? So after two years, Joseph was released from the prison. They quickly shaved him because we know a Semite would likely to have a full beard. And so they presented him in, in, in clean clothing and a shaved beard. And he came, he came before Pharaoh in the most presentable way he could. But he did not have fear of man when he spoke to Pharaoh. He actually interpreted Pharaoh's dream with honesty and with wisdom. That's good. You know, the. The Egyptians then, they give Joseph an Egyptian name, Zafat Paniyah, which means savior of the world or revealer of secrets. So they recognize that he is the one sent by God to reveal the secrets that the Pharaoh is dealing with. And then he's going to be set at the right hand of the Pharaoh. Does that not look forward 
to Yeshua coming up out of the grave, going to the right hand of the Father. It's, it, it's such a parallel with the exaltation that is going to happen in Yeshua's life as the suffering servant who becomes the Savior of the world and Mashiach to the Jewish people. And that's what we see here with Joseph. He's going to place, be placed next to Pharaoh, who is considered a god, small g, and he's going to speak for Ha Elohim, the real one true God. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Our offer on this program, Zola Levitt's booklet, The Seven Feasts of Israel, as well as the popular companion booklets, The Miracle of Passover, The Crown Jewel of Biblical Feast, and A Christian Love Story, a beautiful story of the wedding customs of Israel in Messiah's time. As for the feast package, you'll find these booklets to be striking examples of the types and shadows of the Messiah, Yeshua. Information well worth knowing. Pharaoh's hopes had been renewed. Perhaps there was someone who could interpret his dreams. His own court had proven unworthy. Yes, this Joseph was a Hebrew, just a humble slave. But perhaps his God had blessed him with special wisdom. Why not give him an ear? Salome, I'm going to speak to you. And here we go from the Yerusha and the Parod of Shemot. We'll see you soon. והנה מיד אחרינו עוד שבע פרות אחרות, אלו רזות וריקות מבשר. ויאכלו שבע הפרות הרזות, שבע פרות הדשנות. פארו then describes a second dream, in which seven ears of full-bodied grain grow on a single stalk, and behind them seven other ears shriveled up by the wind. השיבולים הדקות בלעו את השיבולים הטובות. שבע הפרות המלאות, מהשיבולים הטובות, הן שבע שנות שפע. שבע הפרות הרזות, ושבע השיבולים הדקות, הן שבע שנות רעב, שיבואו אחריהן. ממש כפי שמגיע הלילה לאחר יום. האלוהים מזהירך פרעה, בפני העומד הוא לעשות. כדי שתוכל להכין את מצרים בשנים הטובות. so many parallels with the life of Yeshua. It's amazing. That's why we wanted to bring you this story. Joseph's story speaks of the suffering and then the exaltation. Yeshua's story is one of suffering and exaltation. He comes as the suffering servant. He returns as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the parallel in the bride that is given to Joseph. Joseph is given an Egyptian bride. What a picture of the international church, every tongue and every tribe. People from every nation are being called out in this church age and being knit to the Jewish bridegroom of heaven. What a story. And now, at the end of the age, God has his eye back on his own brethren, his own Jewish people, the natural seed of Abraham. And we are recognizing Yeshua in greater numbers than any time since the book of Acts. Yeah, God is saying that he is with his people, even in a time of suffering. You know, we'll look fast forward when Joseph says, you know, you meant it for evil mm. to his brothers, but God meant it for good. Mm. And I believe it's through these times where he's beginning to see that his life 
being brought to Egypt, that God was going to save not only the 12 tribes, not only the Israelites, but he was going to make a provision for the whole world, for Egypt in the time of famine that was to come. God is a God of mercy and he makes a plan and he has a way even in the hardest circumstances. And we, brothers and sisters, need to hold on to that in the times that are ahead of us, that God has a provision for us and God has a way for us to navigate in times of difficulty. Oh, that's good. You know that God provides for the whole world, Egypt, the center of the world at the time, and then he's going to bring the Jewish people into that. Jacob and his sons are going to come into that provision. The only provision available to us on this earth is through Yeshua HaMashiach. That is the provision. That's what ends the famine. There's spiritual famine. There's earthly famine. Whatever the famine is, it's affected by and positively affected by Yeshua and contact with Yeshua. Joseph warns Pharaoh of a difficult time to come, just as Christ, Yeshua, Jesus, was the true witness. He said, difficulties will come, but I have overcome the world. Yeah. And he invites us into that loving yeah. relationship. And then the counsel is received. Yes. Pharaoh was so blessed, so blown away, he recognizes that Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, is with Joseph, just as the Holy Spirit is with Yeshua. And in Acts 10, 38, we read that God has anointed him yes. with spirit and power. Yeah, you know, he answers Pharaoh with honesty mm. and he answers him with the appropriate ability to, to have a, a plan. He actually gives him a business plan of how to bring this about in these last days. But I also want to encourage us really strongly to know that God is the God of forgiveness. And as Joseph moved forward, he had to know that God was with him no matter what. Yeah, and as we close this section, I want to remind you as well, think about what Joseph did. He had a word of knowledge from heaven, and he had a word of wisdom for Pharaoh. Yes. So here's what God wants to do with us. Yes. I see it in counseling all the time, not because I'm something, but because God is something. Yes. God wants to give you a word of knowledge, a supernatural insight for someone's life, and then give you a word of wisdom on how to apply it. Let's be like Joseph and make the best of every situation. Hi, you know, besides the television program Zola Levitt Presents, we also have our monthly newsletter, which is free. It's the Levitt Letter. And it comes with good information about Israel and the Jewish people from Miles and Catherine and so many others. And it's all made possible because of your continued generous support. And we just want to say thank you. Israel is a land full of promises. You will never be the same, so we invite you to come. It's a trip of a lifetime. We'd love you to join us. We would love to host you in Israel. It is the trip of a lifetime. Some of the scenes you're seeing in this series are right. related to the holy sites that you would see if you come with us. The Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, the Garden Tomb, even ancient Shiloh where the Ark of the Covenant stood for 369 years. We've mm. added that to our tour as well. So we encourage you to get in touch with us. Come to Israel. You'll never be the same. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Miles, in our story with Joseph, we've learned so many lessons that when life hits us, mm -hmm. God can make all things work together for good, you know, and J Joseph was in, in a pit, in the prison, and now he's in the palace, mm -hmm. and God is bringing him forth, and it, it shows us that we need to be ready mm -hmm. to give an answer, and not only does God have us on this earth to be pulpit people, but he wants to use us in places of influence, yes. in government, in, in our workplace, yes. in spheres of influence that can affect others for good and, right. for, and for light. You know, the, even Pharaoh, the king, said th the spirit of God is on this mm -hmm. man and the spirit of discernment and wisdom. Yeah. Isn't, could, that, isn't that amazing that Pharaoh, who was not a believer, did not know the God of Abraham, yeah. Isaac, and Jacob, in fact, thought he was himself right. a God, uh, he recognized something of the holiness of the Spirit of God on Joseph. Mm -hmm. And they developed this relationship that is going to be a blessing to all the world. Something about interacting with the marketplace, with the Absolutely. life as it is on, on life's terms, that we can bring that something of the Lord to the world as it is. 
and don't have false humility. If God wants to promote you in your job mm. and you feel like it's the Lord, step out and let yeah. Him use you. Yes, yeah, we never know that He may want to increase our sphere of influence yeah. for the good of the kingdom, the king. Uh, I think about the, the Pharaoh is recognizing the spirit of counsel yes. that is on Joseph. It's almost like a fulfillment of what will come later in Isaiah 9 where the wonderful counsel will be prophesied regarding Yeshua. But Joseph is a type of that. He's becoming that counselor mm. to the Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And we see in Colossians 2, 3, that all treasure wow. of wisdom and knowledge belongs to Yeshua. Amen. The Pharaoh is beginning to see the wisdom of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's in Joseph. It's on Joseph. Yes. Pharaoh recognizes that wisdom. And I think forward to Matthew 7, where the, the rulers of the synagogue were astonished at the wisdom right. that Yeshua had, even as a young boy and then later as a man as well. Mm -hmm. And so let's go to our story as we see Pharaoh and Joseph beginning to develop something that will become safety and redemption for Hallelujah. the entire known world. <laughs> זה היה ניחוכמה רבה בדבריך. מאחר ואלוהים עצמו גילה לך את הדבר, למנייני אותך לתפקיד הרם ביותר בממלכתי. עליך להכין ולצייד את הארץ במהלך השנים הטובות, כך שמוכנים נהיה לקראת השנים הקשות. Just as Joseph had foretold, there were seven bountiful years in Egypt. Joseph, now second only to Pharaoh himself, ensured that grain was stored as plentiful as the sand of the sea. But then the famine, again, just as Joseph had foreseen. The storehouses are opened and provisions sold to all. But the famine reached beyond Egypt and soon they would come from every nation to purchase grain from Joseph. Joseph is in the palace now. Yep. There's been quite a journey as he has been taken from the pit to the prison to the palace, but at 30 years old, it was the appointed time for him. The word of the Lord tried him mm -hmm. until that time. Yeah. And God has now arrayed him, not only with the wisdom that he needs to rule at this time and to bring salvation through this bread mm -hmm. and through the, the grain, but to bring wisdom to Pharaoh, yeah. to, to lead him yeah. to the Spirit of God, yeah. the counsel of God. One more time we see in the history of the planet that the Jewish people are used to bless the Gentile world. Yeah. Whatever the God's propaganda intention. against that, the fact is that Amen. Joseph is being used to bless Egypt and the surrounding nations and Daniel will be used in Babylon. Yes. It's just always a theme throughout the history of the world that God will use the Jewish people as a blessing. Yeah. Uh, we had a chance to speak with a modern version of that. We spoke to Rabbi Jeremy Gimpel. He's of the Voice of Israel, a radio program that speaks about the blessing that is in the Jewish people's return to the land and the blessing that is there for those of us who choose to stand with God's plan for Israel. Let's go to that interview right now. Rabbi, thank you for being with us. Uh, you said I looked familiar, but I know I've seen you on television, on JLTV, Tuesday Night Live, Jerusalem, but I think your work has grown since then. What's going on? Um, yeah, Tuesday Night Live has now launched into a new broadcasting network called Voice of Israel, and I'm now one show on many shows, uh, really sharing the truth about Israel, the perspectives that we would want the world to see. And when it says the Torah shall go forth from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem, imagine a broadcasting network from Jerusalem broadcasting the true message of Israel to the world, and that's Voice of Israel. It's exciting. This is going to be music to our viewers' ears and 
water their souls because our viewers are very pro-Israel. But I, I wanted to tell you that we're, we're working on a series of jo on Joseph, and we've just finished the segment that speaks about prosperity and elevation when he's brought out of the jail into uh, Pharaoh's home to speak truth to power and to be an advocate. That's happened to you. There's been a great expansion, correct? Yeah, it seems like just in the nick of time when the world needs the truth out of the Middle East that the people should know what the forces of good are up against. Mm -hmm. There is now a large new broadcasting network right in the nick of time. Mm -hmm. uh, the world will hear the truth and we're just blessed to be a part of it. We've been working so hard for the last 10 years, pretty much on our own. Mm -hmm. And now we have a whole staff behind us, a new production team, and we'll be bigger and better than ever. They just really see the hand of God in that, yes. And I was wondering about um, the, the controversy of uh, the the double standard that in this story of Joseph that the, the desire of Joseph that his bones would be in the promised land and yet you can't go and visit those bones. Is that true? Yeah, can you imagine the holy city of Shechem? It's where Abraham first walked to when he first got. He arrived in Shechem mm. and God said at this place I promise you and your descendants the land of Israel forever as an everlasting covenant. Mm. And at that place, Joseph said, that's where I want to be, where God promised the land to Abraham's descendants forever and ever. And now at that holy spot, Jews can't even walk. And if they do, there better be tanks and jeeps and a military escort. Mm -hmm. And we are once again banned from praying and being in our holiest places in our own land. And for our viewers' sake, they need to know that the, it's been renamed and it, now it's Nablus but it's biblically the heart of Israel. Yes, absolutely. When you think about Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, the reason why those two mountains were chosen was because in between those two mountains lies the ancient city of Shechem, which is now called Nablus. And it was called Nablus because the Roman emperor called it Naples because it reminded him of a city in Italy. And because the Arabs of the Middle East can't pronounce the letter P, they call it Nablus instead of Napolis. Wow. There's so much renaming that has gone on here, so much disinformation about the Jewish history and presence in the land. One of the series we completed recently we called Zion Forever because we want to establish the, the reality of the Jewish presence for thousands and thousands of years when this disinformation is going out and flooding America as well. Uh, you're really a part now of sending out the real story of what's going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the truth is that the base covenant that God has with the Jewish people isn't about the Bible at all. It's not about the prophets. It's not about the holidays. It's not about the rituals, laws, or customs. Wow. Abraham had no law. It was before Sinai. Mm -hmm. Abraham's covenant with God, Jacob's covenant with God, our base covenant with God was the land of Israel. Hmm. That is such a profound, obvious statement, and yet it's going over the heads, certainly of secular people, but I think even uh, Christian people who think, believe that, and trying to be faithful to the Bible to the best of their ability, they don't understand that because there's a movement even within Christianity now to refute the Jewish presence, biblical right to the land. Well, you can imagine then the enemy is really at tough work to refute the biblical base covenant mm. of God and His people. If it is the land of Israel, you can imagine why the world is obsessed now with dividing the land of Israel, a land the size of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They want to carve it up. Why? It's so small. But it's because they're not just attacking us politically, mm. they're trying to attack the base covenant we have with God. Mm. That's good. The, uh, the name changing, uh, that's where we got Palestine, correct? That's right. In the year 136, the Roman Emperor Hadrian came to Judea and crushed our final revolt for Jewish freedom. And he said, that's it, I'm going to erase Jewish memory from history and I will change the name Judea in Israel to Palestine after the ancient enemies of the Jews, the Philistines. And from that moment on, we've uh, been calling the land of Israel Palestine for about 1,900 years. But right before that, anyone that lived before the Roman Emperor Hadrian, of course, knew this is the land of Israel, the land of Judea. So the name changing, the disinformation, the revisionist history is everywhere. And now uh, focusing on the Temple Mount. Tell us about that. Well, the Temple Mount is, of course, the holiest place to the Jewish people in the world. Every synagogue around the world, wherever it may be, is constructed facing Jerusalem. And if you're in Jerusalem, it's constructed facing the Temple Mount. For thousands of years, the focus of all Jewish prayer has been the Temple Mount. That's where Abraham sacrificed Isaac. That's where we believe the whole universe was created from. That is the connection of the heaven 
heavenly realm and the earthly realm. It is God's footstool on earth. And Jews and Christians are not allowed to ascend the Temple Mount with a prayer book. They're not allowed to ascend the Temple Mount with a Bible. They're not allowed to ascend the Temple Mount and utter prayers. If you could imagine in a democracy where the cornerstone of democracy is freedom of religion, Jews and Christians can't pray at our holiest site. It's outrageous. It is outrageous and a double standard that is seen, I don't think, anywhere else in the world where uh, Israel is held to one standard and the rest of the world a completely different one. Well, we talked about name changing. Mm -hmm. Why am I called a Jew? Many people think I'm called a Jew because we're from the tribe of Judah. But if you look in the Bible, it's not true. Mordechai in the scroll of Esther is called a Jew. Mordechai the Jew, okay. but he's from the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. So why are we called Jews? We're called Jews because we were from Judea. Now imagine today Judea and Samaria, where Shechem lies, yes. is called the West Bank. Now how easy is it to say, oh you, you're occupying settlers of the West Bank, mm. get out. Imagine if they said Jews, get out of Judea. Mm. That'd be a lot harder. Mm. We'd be like, what? Jews, get out of Judea. I'm a Jew because I'm from Judea. This is my land. And so the misinformation and the name changing has confused the entire world. Strong words from Rabbi Jeremy, you know, we fully agree with this testimony that the changing of names and the rewriting of history and the attempt through propaganda to wipe out the Jewish history in the land is destructive not only to Israel and the Jewish people, but to the cause of anyone who believes in truth. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to continue this program, programs like this and right. what Jeremy is doing to bring the truth to the world at large, just as Joseph was able to bring the truth to Pharaoh and showed him the things that were coming. Right, and Pharaoh had the dream and God was quickening even the king of that time to awaken us. I keep hearing in my heart, Miles, people get ready, people mm. get ready. You know, God has a plan for us in hard times and in good times. And in good times, it's to work hard so we'll be prepared for the hard times. So God will have a supply yeah. for us and those that the world might need. So there is a season for each time of our life that we're in and this is the time for us to preach the gospel share the good news and be ready to give an answer yes and that is why we like to end our program with this strong but pleasant reminder for you shalu shalom yerushalayim pray for the peace of jerusalem our monthly newsletter the levitt letter is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective Visit Levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at Levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries.